Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the lead code question, orderly Q. Alright, so in this question we're going to be given a string S and an integer K. So we can choose one of the first K letters of S and append it to the end of the string. Now the goal here is to return the lexicographically smallest string you could have after applying the steps that they just mentioned. So what does that mean? So uh, when you have CBA, the best answer that you could get would be ABC, okay? So that would be the lexicographically smallest value, right? That would be the ideal value if you could return. But in this case, we have a condition which tells us that we can only move the first letter to the ending. That's the only thing we can do, but one to remember is we can perform this for how many other steps we want. There's no restriction on the number of times we can do it. But the restriction is on the fact that we can only move the first letter to the ending, okay? And based on that, what is the smallest lexicographically string uh, that we could actually get? That's what we return. Now, another example is when k is equal to three. Now, in this case, what it tells us is that we can move any of the letters up to the third letter. So that includes the first letter, the second letter, and the third letter. We can move any of them to get uh, whatever new string that we want to form. Uh, in other words, whatever the lexicographically smallest string is. So in this case, we can either move B, A, or A to the ending and perform the steps over and over again until we get whatever we're happy with, okay? So now let's see how we can actually solve this question. And there's actually one pattern that we have to look for to actually get the best solution for this. So let's take a quick look at that. All right, so over here, I'm gonna start off with the case of when k is equal to one. So what we're gonna notice is k is equal to one, and when k is greater than or equal to two are basically the only two cases that we have. And we don't need to worry about when k is equal to three or whatever, because it all they all of these behave the same way. And what I wanna do is actually show you how that is true. So instead of using letters, so instead of using a comma b comma c, for example, I'm just going to use 1, 2, 3. Right? I just think it's a lot easier to look at that and make comparisons with numbers rather than with letters. Okay, But the idea is going to be exactly the same. So let's say over here I have the numbers 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And I said k is equal to 1. What does that mean? Well, what that's telling me is that whatever I do, I can only take the first letter and move it to the ending. So in this case, that's a value 5. So one thing that I want to show you is we can actually just look at all of these possible values in the first time. And uh, let me just do that right now. So we have 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And let's look at the other possibilities. So now we move 5 to the ending, giving us 4, 3, 2, 1, and then 5. So now we can move the 4 to the ending. Okay. So let me just write all of these down. So we have 3, 2, 1, 5, 4. Now we move the 3 to the ending. So 2, 1, 5, Oh, sorry, uh, 2, 1, 5, 4, 3. Cool. And now we move the 2 to the ending. So 1, 5, 4, 3, 2. Right? Okay, sorry. And then finally we move the 1 to the ending. Giving us 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Perfect. Now these are all the combinations. So look, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 gets us back to this value over here. And then we just keep repeating these over and over again, okay? And these are just all the combinations we have. We're never gonna have more than these combinations. So now what we really do is we get all of these and out of these, we see whatever is the lexicographically smallest. So in this case, uh, whatever is closest to ascending order would be the best answer, correct? And we look at them like in a brute force way using, and then we choose the best one. And in this case, the number of combinations we have is going to be whatever the length of the input is. So in this case, the length of the input is one, two, three, four, five. So we have five possible values, five possible combinations for this. And you can look at this, one, two, three, four, and five. It's pretty simple, right? So basically what this is saying, when k is equal to one, we're basically looking at a circle, okay? And the best way to show you this is if I draw it up. So five point up to four to three, and then to two, two, one, and then five. So in the beginning, we have five as a starting point. So we have five, four, three, two, one. Cool. But now we can take four as a starting point, giving us four, three, two, one, five, which is exactly this. Then we have three as a starting point, giving us three, two, one, five, four. 
and then 2 as a starting point, giving us 2, 1, 5, 4, 3, and then 1 giving us 1, 5, 4, 3, 2, and finally back to 5. So essentially when k is equal to 1, all that's happening is we're in, we're kind of rotating this array around. We're rotating the values that we have, but the only thing that's really changing is the starting point. We're not changing uh, the order at which they're in, but we're just changing their positions, okay? So 5 is always going to be next to 4. We're not changing that in any way. So this is the restriction that we have when we have k is equal to 1. And in simple words, what is happening over here is we're rotating the array, okay? At the first place. So like I showed you in that circle, we're just rotating it and we have a fixed number of possibilities, which is, well, going to be the length of whatever the input is. And when we have k is equal to 1, we get all of these values and then we just get whatever is the lexicographically smallest value and return that. But now where it gets different is when k is greater than or equal to 2. So to start off, let's start off with the base case of when k is equal to 2. So what I want to do is let's just take a smaller example. I think that'll be easier. So say we take 2, uh, comma 1, comma 3, comma 4. Okay, so in this case, what is how, how do we get the best value? So the way we get the best value is when we get 1, comma 2, comma 3, comma 4, ascending order, right? So this is the best answer. Now, how can we actually achieve this? We can achieve that by swapping 1 and 2. Now, this is possible when k is equal to 2, but it's not possible when k is equal to 1. When k is equal to 1, all that happens is we rotate our set of values. But when k is equal to 2, the big operation that we can do in this case is we can perform a swapping operation. And when we can do that, we can actually always guarantee to get the best value. So we can always get the lexicographically smallest value. Or in this case, we can always get the ascending order. And let me actually show you how we can do that. So when k is equal to 2, we can swap either the first number or the second number. Either of them can be swapped at one time. So let's start off, and really, like I said, we want to swap these two. So the way we do that is we first pop out the 1. So that gives us 2, 3, 4, and then we have 1. And then we pop out the 2. So this gives us 3, 4, 1, and then we have a 2. Perfect. So now what happened is earlier it was 2, 1, but now it's 1, 2, which is the correct order that we need them in. And all that's left to do is get back, get them back to their correct positions. So we first pop out the 3, giving us 4, 1, 2, 3. And finally, we pop out the 4, giving us 1, 2, 3, 4. So as you can see, we got the correct, the best answer that we can get. So the point I'm trying to show here is whenever k is greater than or equal to 2, we will be able to get the best possible answer. So we don't need to actually look at all the possible values. We can just directly just return the best possible answer. That's it. So uh, just to show you another example, let's say instead of 2, 1, 3, 4, we have 2, 1, 4, 3. Okay. So I'm just going to do it over here. So again, the same thing applies. But in this case, we've got to make two swaps, one over here and one over here. So it's going to be done the exact same way. So first, we pop out the 1. So giving us 2, 4, 3, 1. And now we've got to get the 2 out of the way. So 4, 3, 1, 2. But now we've got to pop out the uh, 3 first, right? Because it's 1, 2, and then we need to get the 3 and then the 4. So this would now be 4, 1, 2, 3. And finally, we've got to get the 4 in the correct place. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's actually just look at something where the swaps are not next to each other. So an example could be 2, 4, 1, 3. So look, the swaps are not next to each other, but we can still end up getting the correct value or the smallest lexicographically value. Well, in this case, 1, 2, 3, 4. So just to actually do that real quickly, what we could do in the beginning is we take the 4 on that side. So 4, 1, 3, 2. That's what we get. And then what we could do is we could take the 1 on that side. So that would give us 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the 4 on that side, giving us 3, 2, 1, 4. So right now we have 3 and 2 that we could swap out with. But let's just do it step by step. So first let's do the 1 and 2. Okay, so let's get rid of the 2 on that side. So 2, 1, 4, 3. Now again, you could do this any possible way. 
the end result is still going to be the same. And again, we don't need to, we don't really care about how many times it actually takes us. So at this point, we swap the two and one. So we would do that between two comma uh, four comma three comma one, and then we do four comma three comma one comma two. And now all that's left is the four and three. So we take the three outside. So that gives us four comma one comma two comma three, and finally the four on the other side. So it will give us one comma two comma three comma four. Okay, so my point here is no matter what it is, by performing swapping operations, we will always be able to get this, the smallest lexicographical order that we need. So real quickly, when k is equal to one, we got to kind of brute force it and look at all the possibilities and choose the smallest one. But when k is greater than or equal to two, then in that case, we just directly return the smallest or best lexicographically sorted order. So that's it. So now let's see what this looks like in code. All right, so like I said, first we check for the condition if k is equal to one. Now when k is equal to one, this is where we gotta look at all the possibilities. So over here, we're gonna have a string called result, and we're gonna set result uh, in the beginning to have a value of s. So the reason I'm doing that is because each time we're gonna be comparing result. So we could actually you know, set it to something like an empty string, but when we're making a comparison, the empty string is always gonna be the smallest, so that makes no sense. So instead what we do is, look, in this case we have five possibilities. So by setting it to the last possibility, right, what we can do is instead we just go through the n minus one possibility. So we set it to this value in the beginning and then we compare it with the other n minus one values that we have. And by the end of it, result is gonna have the smallest one, okay? So now we're gonna go in a for loop and the range is gonna be the length of s minus one, like I explained, right? Because res is equal to s, cool. So now we gotta reconstruct s. And what I mean by that is whatever is at the zero at index goes to the ending, okay? And how can we do that? Well, that's pretty simple. So we take whatever is uh, everything after the zero at index, so from the first index to the ending, and after that to the ending, we're gonna add whatever is at the zero at index. So this is our new string. And over here, we're going to take the value of result, and it's going to be the minimum between whatever the current value of result is and the new string that we have after taking the zeroth index value and putting it at the ending. So by the end of this, we're going to have the smallest value for this, and we're going to return that in result. So that's it. But if this is not the case, that means, well, k is greater than or equal to 2. So in this point, it's very simple. What we got to do is we just got to sort s, and the way we do that is we could do sorted s. Now, one thing to note is that this returns a string, sorry, a list, but we actually want to return a string. So the way we do that is we could use a join function. So we could use this dot join, and we put the list over there. So essentially what this means is that between each of the elements in the list, this is going to be what's in between of them. So in this case, uh, let's say we have a, b, a, comma, b, comma, c, it's gonna just be joined to a, b, and b in this case, right? Uh, okay, that's it. So that's what the join function does, and we got returned. So return, and that should be it. So let's submit our solution. And as you can see, our submission was accepted. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and do let me know if you have any other questions.